This is pretty bad. Um, a lot worse than it looked from the top, but I knew they were gonna be here because they said the bed bugs had been here for a couple years. It was just a matter of time before I found the big hot spots, and I have just found them. So I flipped the mattress over and it wasn't that bad. I mean, the mattress is disgusting, but it's just some like stains from the rust in the in the metal. But I flipped over the box frame and found the, the hot spots of bed bugs, guys. So that's one up here, but those are just the ones that are on the box spring. And there's way more up there too. If you look down at the, the ground here, at the frame where the, the bed bugs were, guys, look at that. Those are all bed bugs and they are all al alive bed bugs, which is crazy. Well, they're not all alive. Some of these is the bed bug skin up here. But all these adults, guys, those are all alive, and that is terrifying and disgusting. This is definitely up there as one of the worst infestations I've ever seen. This is not dust over here. This is the bed bug skin sheds. I don't know the term for it. The bed bug shells that they that they shed when they grow. But guys, rub your hand through this, and it just starts moving. Can you believe that? Look at this pile of them here. None of this is like dust. That's all live bed bugs, bed bug eggs, bed bug droppings, or bed bug skin sheds. It's terrifying, really, to look at something like this and think that this could be under someone's bed. Guys, look at that. Oh my gosh. And it's crazy how they don't move until they're disturbed, you know? They were just standing there. And then whenever you run your finger over them, then they start moving. After I finish showing you guys this crazy infestation, later in the video, I'm going to explain to you everything you need to know about how to not get bed bugs. Just look at that. It doesn't look real. I mean, even seeing that many roaches in one spot is crazy, but seeing this many bed bugs in one spot, it's disheartening and disturbing. It's something you don't want to see. And it's really a shame that these people they tried to tried to get rid of the bed bugs by themselves, and he said they've had them for a couple years. We always do the best we can, but this is going to take months to get rid of a infestation like this. Very sad to see, and it's going to be very difficult to get rid of these bed bugs. I mean, they're just everywhere. I'm usually not scared of taking bed bugs home with me, but I'm definitely going to be stripping all my clothing whenever I get home before I go inside, because this is just extreme. There's more groups of them here. I mean, you can move this here and then... All those bed bugs. This mattress needs to be thrown away. The, the customers know that this mattress needs to be thrown away. And, and we're not supposed to throw away stuff for them. So I'm going to be spraying this mattress. Um, so that's really the only thing I know to do at this point is just spray it really well. And I'll show you guys how I spray it. I've got my product mixed up in here. I'm using Crossfire today. It's a really good bed bug product. You just, I mean, just soak it because that's all you can do. The chemical... It's supposed to be white, but once it, once it mixes with the, the bed bugs, it's it'll turn brown. It's pretty nasty. The good thing about this stuff it is it it leaves a residual and whenever it dries, the bed bugs will run over it. So this is they have cats too. That's all this cat hair over here. The cats must get under the bed. Unfortunate thing for the cats, I guess, is that the bed bugs don't really bite cats or dogs they they can bite cats or dogs they're really not built to go into the fur like that they're meant to feed on you know just human skin unlike fleas that they are meant to crawl through fur bed bugs have trouble crawling through fur like that bed frame first and then i'll hit the box frame bed bugs love being up underneath things it's just their nature i'm gonna go ahead and set you guys back up there for a second so listen to this guys, this is a real statistic from my businesses over the past six months, our bed bug calls have increased by 40% more than what we're normally used to seeing. 40% is definitely a noteworthy stat and it seems to just have come out of nowhere. But I believe we've had this increase in bed bug problems in this area for a couple of different reasons. Mainly, I think it's just a culmination of traveling, say July, August, September, October, November, and December, 
those six or seven months, guys, probably get twice as much traveling as the other first half of the year. People are taking their summer vacations, they're taking fall vacations, and a ton of travel is always around the holidays, around Thanksgiving, around Christmas, and around New Year's. More human travel means more possibilities for bed bugs to transmit to other humans, and that's actually what a lot of people don't understand about bed bugs. That's the only way you can get bed bugs is from getting them from another person who has them. So bed bugs are parasites. They need blood meals to survive. They are unique parasites to humans and humans only. Bed bugs don't live outside naturally like other bugs do. They only live in beds where humans are sleeping. So when thousands and millions of people across the globe are traveling and intersecting paths, the chances of spreading bed bugs just drastically goes up. Now, I'm not saying don't travel. I'm gonna explain exactly how people usually get bed bugs, but, but traveling and staying with people that has bed bugs, that's the bottom line. That's how bed bugs happen. So I think that has been one of the main reasons. The second reason why I think bed bugs have been increasing over time is because there is just a extremely severe lack of knowledge about bed bugs. If you talk to the average person walking down the street in the United States, they really just don't know anything about bed bugs. And, and I don't blame them. They haven't been historically a problem, but over the years, guys, they've slowly, slowly, slowly been increasing and no one knows anything about them. No one knows what they look like. No one knows where they come from. No one knows how to get rid of them. And when people get bed bugs, they're just completely caught by surprise. They don't know what they are. They think they might be a tick. They think it might be a cockroach. People think they're getting bit by fleas sometimes. People think they're getting, you know, just rashes on their skin. It's wild that people don't know what bed bugs are. And I guess I definitely have a biased opinion because I'm in the pest control industry. You should have just some kind of tiny understanding of what bed bugs are and where they come from. Because the simple matter of fact, guys, is unfortunately, Anybody can get bed bugs. Based on all of my experience, guys, I'm gonna to explain to you the number one way people get bed bugs. And if you can prevent putting yourselves into this one particular situation, you have a much higher chance of not getting bed bugs. So the number one way that people get bed bugs, in my experience, is that they are staying at a friend's or a family's house that has bed bugs. They're staying overnight via a fun party sleepover, via travel for holidays. The more nights you stay at this person's house, the higher chances you get of carrying the bed bugs back to your house. But guys, most people don't have bed bugs, so how can you tell if your friend or family member has bed bugs? Well, I'm saying this with some caution because this is definitely not 100% true, but there are some specific groups of people who usually unknowingly have and transfer bed bug infestations from themselves to another person that's staying in their home. I can kind of divide these people into three different categories, okay? The first category is usually older people. Now, I don't know what age this starts to happen at, but in my experience, older people do not have as sensitive skin as younger people do. That means that when the bed bug comes out, crawls up their arm and bites them at night, and then crawls back under the bed, they wake up the next morning and they don't have any red marks on their skin, they don't feel anything, they don't wake up from it. Their skin is just not as sensitive as it used to be. When you have less sensitive skin, that's ruling out a sign that a lot of people look to first when they realize they have bed bugs. If they don't have any bites on their skin, they're not gonna know they have bed bugs at first. So I find a lot of older people end up getting bed bug infestations and the infestations carry on over a couple weeks before they even realize that they have them. And that's how they can get bad and bad enough to spread. Now the second group of people is what I would categorize as mentally handicapped. This kind of person, whether it's an official disease or an official handicap they have, or if it's an unofficial handicap they have, they just don't care that they have bed bugs. Maybe they realize it. Maybe they realize there's something biting them when they sleep. For whatever reason, they just don't care that the bed bugs are biting them. And they let the infestation continue and continue until someone comes in and sees these bugs on their bed and they're like, hey, why do you have bugs on your bed? And that's a lot of people that call us are mentally handicapped people that have bed bugs, but just don't care that they do. And that is sad to see a lot of times. And the third category of people that can have bed bugs and let their infestation linger is physically handicapped people. Now these people, maybe, maybe they're blind. Maybe they can't see the bed bugs. Maybe these physically handicapped people aren't able to 
call. Maybe they're not able to prepare for a treatment or they're not able to treat the bed bugs themselves. We get a ton of calls of bed bugs on wheelchairs. People come into a hospital with bed bugs all over their wheelchairs and their physical handicap being in a wheelchair, it has caused the bed bug infestation to persist over time and then they start spreading it to other people. So when you go stay at a friend or family member's house who may be very old, mentally handicapped or physically handicapped, just do yourself a quick favor and inspect thoroughly the couch or the bed wherever you're going to be sleeping. If it's just a guest bed, there might not be any bed bugs on there, but if you're staying in the same bed with them that they normally sleep in, then that gives you a very high chance of getting bed bugs on your clothes. They get on your clothes, they get in the suitcase, and then you take them home and then you lay on the bed and then boom, you've got bed bugs on your own personal bed. So that situation I described to you guys, if you can identify situations like that in your life and eliminate them or preemptively inspect for bed bugs in these situations, you give yourself a very high chance of not getting bed bugs because no one cares about bed bugs until you get them or someone you know gets them and then they're a big, big problem. I hope you guys learned something from this video. That's all I ever try to do in my videos is just educate you guys and help you live a pest-free life. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.